If a function has an antiderivative, the integral along a closed contour will be zero. This is not a nice criterion because it involves finding an antiderivative. Fortunately, we have a much easier criterion in complex analysis. Contour integrals along closed contours of analytic functions are zero. And determining whether a function is analytic or not is much easier than determining an antiderivative. The theorem that tells us that analyticity is not sufficient is the famous theorem of Cauchy Gossa. We'll encounter the theorem and the proof of the Cauchy version in this video. So, what's the theorem? Well, our curve C has to be simple and closed. I have to traverse it once counterclockwise, so in positive sense f of z has to be analytic on and inside c. That's the Gossard version. That one is quite hard to prove. And in the Cauchy version, uh, we also assume that f prime of z is continuous on and inside c. We will prove the Cauchy version because it's much easier to prove. Uh, but uh, remember, you can drop condition 3. Proof is just a bit harder. If you satisfy this, well, then our integral equals 0. So, what's the situation? We have our C, our closed contour, we go counterclockwise once, and we surround an area R. Then we know from real analysis, green theorem. So what does green tell us? If you have real functions P and Q of X and Y, continuous is continuous partial derivatives, then you can express the integral along C, along the boundary, in terms of an area integral along R, an integrated integral, and then you have to integrate Qx minus Py. So how can we use the theorem to prove the uh, Cauchy version of cauchy gossa Well, we have the integral along C, f dz. We know how to compute it. f equals u plus i times v. Then you have to parameterize, and you get z prime dt. So here we have our z prime dt, and you have to integrate from a to b. That's if you parameterize C. Well, now what happens if you split this into real and imaginary parts? You get a u times x prime minus v times y prime dt. That's what we have over there. And you get an i times v times x prime and an i times u times y prime dt. That's what we have over here. So the x prime dt becomes dx and the, uh, v, uh, the y prime dt becomes a dy. Similarly, for the imaginary part, all integrals along C. And now you can use uh, Green theorem, uh, integral along Cp dx plus q dy equals integral along R qx minus py. So in the first case, we have u dx, so uh, our uh, p will be u, so we get a minus ui, and we have minus v dy, so our q will be minus v, so we get a minus vx over here. And similarly for the imaginary part, but then we know that f is analytic, so we have the cauchy riemann equations, ux equals vy, which means this term cancels out, and uh, ui equals minus vx, which means this term cancels out. So we get 0 plus 0 equals 0. So the integral along c of f to z equals 0. So that's the uh, cauchy cosa uh, theorem, proof of the Cauchy version, but important later on. Uh, you know, it is possible to generalize this and to drop this condition 3.